Welcome to the Swiss Alps and another edition of Random Road Cuts here at the Furka Pass, one of the high passes that go over the uh, Alps here roadway. And we have a lovely little road cut here. So let's check this out together. Hi there, I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey here at the Furka Pass and welcome to Random Road Cuts. So this is a video series where we just pull off the road check out a road cut, make observations together, and see if we can piece together the rock's history and what it has to tell us about what's going on here and the different geologic processes. So let's head across the road here and check out this road cut. All right, so here we have this lovely road cut right along the roadway here. You can see the, some of the snow banks here. This road actually just opened up a few weeks ago, around the 1st of June. So it's uh, just been open for a little bit. They get quite a bit of snow up here at this elevation. And so let's check out the rocks here in this road cut. I think the first thing we can see is that these rocks are layered, have some layering to them. So we might be thinking about sedimentary rocks or possibly uh, the layering we see in metamorphic rocks, which is called foliation. Uh, the Alps have all sorts of different rock types from you know, basement rocks, crystalline rocks. There's quite a bit of sedimentary rocks in, in, along the flanks of the Alps as well. So we'll head across here. Once we let the motorcycles go by and see what we can see. Just make some simple observations together and see what these rocks have to tell us. So we've got these gray rocks here in front of us. And the first thing I'm noticing here with some of these faces in the sunlight is that the rocks are quite crystalline. There's actually some pretty shiny faces on these rocks. And so by seeing crystals rather than grains or fragments of other rocks, that lets us know these rocks are metamorphic or igneous rather than sedimentary. And because they're layered so well, um, that would make these some type of metamorphic rocks. You can see the layering here in the rocks running this way. Um, and we, the shiny minerals we're seeing in here is, is mica. So we have quite a bit of mica, mostly muscovite, probably in these rocks that make them so shiny. So if we kind of then switch over to identifying the rocks in terms of a rock type or a name, um, these, I think I'd call these a schist. I can see the individual mica crystals in the rocks. Um, if it was more of just kind of a glossy sheen, we might call it a phyllite. So what's maybe impressive, I guess, story-wise about these rocks then would be that these would have formed at depth. Metamorphic rocks form at depth deep within the earth, and then they're later brought to the surface. So here we are at a high point in the Alps, and we're looking at rocks that would have formed literally miles, uh, many miles beneath our feet. We don't know the age of the rocks. We don't know exactly what depth they formed at, um, but sometimes with these metamorphic rocks, um, if you spend enough time looking at them and do some analyses, you can start to, if you can start to find certain minerals in them, um, things like garnet or sillimanite, you can actually use those indicator minerals to figure out the depths and pressures that the metamorphic rocks formed under. And so casually, I'm not really seeing any of that here, but I think if you spent enough time uh, looking at these, you might see that. So pretty much a uniform package of these gray rocks. Let's head down here. The outcrop is a little bit higher up the slope here, but there's it looks like it changes color down this way. And also there's an outcrop we can reach pretty easily here at the bottom. Of course, up here in the mountains, the big processes are freeze thaw cycles, uh, gravity causing mass wasting and rock fall events. So there's a lot of different processes conspiring to break up the rocks. Here's some interesting, uh, crystals here. Looks like some quartz crystals in this block of metamorphic rock. We can see the, the banding here on the side. Um, but here's a little sort of pod 
of more crystalline quartz, another little zone over here. Pretty cool. And it, you know, we might expect also with these metamorphic rocks, if there's areas where the rocks underwent wholesale melting, that we might see a little bit of zones of igneous rock material as well, some of those intrusive textures. So here you can see a little bit different color change, more of kind of a, a tan or brown. There's still some gray rocks in front of us on the slope, but the brown rocks here might be a little bit different. So these could be I'm trying to find a, a face so I can see if it has the micas in it as much as here's one here. It's pretty good. So it still has a little bit of mica in it. Still is maybe not a true schist, but what we might call schistose, meaning it's it's schist-like or at least has some of the properties of a true schist. I don't have my uh, my little acid bottles back in my pack somewhere, so I don't have that here. But we might, you know, you could test these and see if they fizz, and it's possible some of these these right brown rocks we're seeing here could be. Uh, marbles and it's even okay to have uh, the micas show up in with the marbles if you remember uh, from the video series on how the rock cycle works marbles are limestones that get metamorphosed so limestones that undergo metamorphosis metamorphosism turn into marbles and schists come from couple different rocks but it could be like a shale or a mudstone or something like that so if you imagine a sedimentary environment where you have alternating layers of um, say, like let's say mudstone and limestone and you metamorphose that whole package then you could end up with a sequence where you have both schist and marble here's another layer here you can see here we have a, a quartz vein so it actually is parallel to the foliation so the foliation is this layering we're seeing in the metamorphic rocks. And here it's running through the rock in this sort of manner. Um, and so one very simple assumption we could make, and it probably wouldn't even be correct, but it's a good place to at least start, is the foliation will always be uh, perpendicular to the pressure that's induced on the rock. So that tells us that the pressure was coming from this direction and or this direction in order to squeeze the rocks down and cause the minerals to realign and form this layering we see here, this foliation. So we've got some of the quartz veins in the rock. Another one up here. You can see there's been some uh, fluid move through the rock later and precipitate out the quartz. That's what a vein is and that's how it's different from a dike. Uh, dikes will tend to be more igneous. They'll have several minerals in them typically, uh, and it, it represents magma that's been injected into the rock, whereas a vein is typically all one mineral, and that represents a fluid water, mineral-rich water moving through the rock along a fracture and then precipitating out whatever mineral material it's carrying. So let's go down a little bit further. Um, and looking at this from down at the road, I didn't see a whole lot of variety. Just scanning the outcrop with my eye and everything's pretty busted up from all the, the freeze thaw cycles. Let's maybe just go down to this point here. This is a huge outcrop, so we won't be able to check out the whole expanse of it. But you can see the way the rocks break out into these nice slabs. Um, and these are used locally for some of the building materials. So there's these real thin pieces like this one here, um, and then more kind of massive blocky slabs like this one here, where you could, there we go, where you could use this for, you know, a building material for the side of a house or, um, actually building up the house itself. Yeah, good stuff. So some metamorphic rocks. And again, I think the cool takeaway from this location as we kind of look up the cliff here 
would be that these rocks formed miles beneath our feet at a deep level, fairly deep level in the Earth's crust, and that probably through the uplift of the Alps, they've been brought up to the surface here where they're exposed. Um, always very cool. So they've gone from a very hot environment that caused wholesale change in the rocks themselves to now uh, a surface environment that's very cold and <laughs> much more conducive to snow and ice. We're not too far from the, the Rhone Glacier, which is uh, where we're going to head next. So we'll go ahead and sign off. So hey, thanks for joining me on this edition of Random Road Cuts. Hope you learned a little bit here as well in this fantastic setting in the Swiss Alps. Uh, appreciate your support of the channel and we'll see you next time. Take care.